assume that motor torque is proportional to motor current. Consequently, the motor torque feedback signal can be derived from the amplifier output current level. The control circuit subtracts this motor output torque signal from the input command at the summing junction. The result is the error signal, which is fed to the amplifier. This configuration may be thought of as a current amplifier. As the control voltage is increased, error increases and is amplified creating higher torque and a higher feedback level. Amplification increases the output until the feedback is large enough to match the control signal and drive the error to zero. Through the use of this feedback control loop, the amplifier output stabilizes at a level that is proportional to the input level. This is known as proportional servo control. The actual torque response of the system depends on how strongly the error signal is amplified. This parameter is called the amplifier gain. Amplifier gain is user adjustable on almost all servo systems. When the gain is set too low, the motor does not obtain the desired performance level. Too much gain results in overshoot, causing the servo to respond with the counter correction. Consequently, this can create overshoot in the opposite direction. In general, gain should be set at a level high enough to yield the best dynamic response, but not so high that it causes oscillation or instability. Torque servo amplifiers are used in dynamic tension control and other applications where constant force is required, independent of speed. For example, a winding operation requires that the motor maintain uniform tension on the take-up reel although motor velocity decreases as reel diameter increases. In this example, the motor applies a controlled force to the gripper jaws. Torque control prevents damage by limiting the force used to grip the product. This same torque amplifier is used as a current control amplifier in a velocity servo system. In this type of system, the input control voltage is proportional to motor speed. In order to close the feedback loop, a motor speed sensor, such as a tachometer, is added to the system. As before, the feedback is subtracted from the input, this time to determine velocity error. This error is amplified by the proportional gain parameter and fed to the current amplifier. The motor is accelerated until the error is zero and the system stabilizes at a speed proportional to the command signal or voltage. The proportional gain amplifier determines actual system response in terms of RPMs per command signal volt. Velocity servo amplifiers typically include a tachometer gain adjustment. This feature allows the servo amplifier to accommodate feedback sensors of varying sensitivity. Minimum adjustment of tach gain provides stability and damping, improving the smoothness of low speed systems. The accuracy requirements of speed regulation varies widely in velocity servo applications. Applications range from machine tool spindle drives and computer disk drives to material feeders and conveyor belts. Many applications require a rapid motor response to a fluctuating control signal. A servo system's ability to follow rapidly changing command signals is referred to as its bandwidth, reflecting its maximum rate of response. Bandwidth reflects the torque to inertia ratio determined by the capabilities of both motor and amplifier and whatever electronic delays are added by the circuitry. A servo system with a low characteristic bandwidth may be too slow to follow input commands. Bandwidth reflects the delay in the system from the time the input changes 
to the time the motor responds. The motor always lags behind the command input. Some servo systems provide a feed-forward capability where the command input bypasses delaying elements for improved response time. The output has the capacity to lead the input signal to a small extent. These are the fundamental building blocks of a servo motor system. Our evolving servo system now must contend with a new, less tolerant factor, position error. If the system used only proportional control elements, any offset in the timing of system response can confound the process of obtaining desired position. Through the use of additional user-adjustable controls, which react to past and predicted behavior of the process under control, positioning servo systems can overcome these variations. This requires the introduction of the programmable servo controller. Controllers of this type are microprocessor controlled, accept digital or numerical position commands, and typically receive incremental digital encoder feedback. Position error is determined numerically rather than electronically. Only for the velocity or torque control command signal does the controller convert digital information into analog. In this configuration, a single incremental encoder can be used to provide position and velocity feedback. One system characteristic that complicates servo control is delayed response. When the dynamics of the process being controlled causes a delay between command and motor response, compensation must be added to the control loop to prevent drastic overshoot. The example, the Delta Queen, is to stop at the dock under servo control. Unfortunately, it is a proportional control and the Queen is heavy. As the boat approaches the designated stopping point, the proportional servo control stops driving, but the inertia carries her well past the dock. No attempt is made to slow her down until the proportional control sees a sign change in the error. At this point, the engines are reversed to correct for the new error. Ideally, such a servo would begin reversing before the load gets to the designated position. Many servos allow this kind of compensation by adding a derivative compensation variable to the control loop. As the load approaches zero position, error is decreasing, meaning that the rate of change of error, or derivative, is negative. A negative signal is fed to the amplifier, reversing power, even though the error is still positive. This adjustable gain has a damping effect on the system performance. Friction is another factor that complicates servo positioning. Positioning accuracy is impaired when friction causes the load to stop just before it reaches the target position. When this happens, position error is too small to provide sufficient torque to overcome friction. In the example, current pushes the Delta Queen away from the dock. The position error soon becomes large enough for proportional control to stop the movement, but not large enough to correct her position. Many servos provide compensation for this by adding an integral compensation variable to the control loop. This adjustable gain term reflects the duration of the error signal. As the load sits just short of final position, the duration of the position error is increasing, compounding the magnitude of the integral error signal. Ultimately, this signal becomes large enough to overcome friction and move the load.